Just set off from Nayland Yacht Club. We're gonna go as the GP14 Association Cruise Week. It's the first proper day sailing. It's an incoming tide, and I have to avoid. Yes, Cameron has been passing. Where's the diapers? Cameron, we have to avoid these concrete blocks. Although I don't think I'm gonna hit them. We were based at Nayland Yacht Club, who kindly hosted us for the week. Here we are just sailing up and down in front of the club until all the boats are on the water. There were eight boats in total and 15 sailors who had travelled from all over the UK to spend the week here in Pembrokeshire, South Wales. Now all the boats are on the water, we set sail for Le Rennie. The forecast was F4, gusting F6 all day, and it was nice and bright as you can see. <laughs> Approaching the Clethai Bridge, which joins Pembroke Dock and Nayland. The bridge actually collapsed in 1970. Uh, it was uh, a girder error, I believe, and it wasn't until 1975 that the bridge uh, went back into full service. That's the Burton Ferry Jetty on the north bank of the Clethai River. You can see the rest of the fleet in the distance. I held back to show you the ferry jetty. So now I'm unfurling the headsail again to start my catch up. That's the XRNLI lifeboat, the Harold Salverson. The owner also owns a GP14 and is acting as our safety vessel for the week. We do things properly at the GP14 Association. Approaching now is one of the faster GP14s, Vertigo, which is more suited to racing than cruising. When you sign up for a GP14 Association cruise event, you get a little list of 
safety requirements which we consider essential for coastal sailing. The list is published prior to each event but some of the key points are being able to reef and having a VHF radio on board. The safety vessel had a little job to do on day one. One of our sailors suffered a cut to the head and was unable to continue the sail. So the Harold Salverson came to the rescue. The patient was cleaned up by our resident nurse during our lunch stop and then they were able to continue sailing in the afternoon. So all was well. Approaching now is the pontoon for the Lorraine Arms Public House. The tide was just over halfway out and so the tidal flow here at this time was quite quick. I had to get the paddle out and to reach the pontoon as the wind had just disappeared as well because it's uh, quite a sheltered area. This is Super Goose approaching, one of the newer GP14s in the fleet. Skippered by Frank and crewed by young Ewan. We had lunch and then jumped on the last of the ebb tide to help us sail back to Nayland. This is the track we sailed. This was the end of our first day's sail as a group, which should have been a second day's sail, but this is July 2023 when the vicious jet stream descended upon us and the weather on our first day was just too unsailable. So this is the start of day two and we're preparing our boats on the Nayland Yacht Club slipway. And then we have our daily pre-sail briefing which covers where we're going, the weather forecast and any plan B's that we might need to consider in case of any uh, unforeseen weather systems. My wife was able to join me the rest of this week and here she is being a good crew and cheesing my painter. That's not a phrase you hear every day.
This is Charles in Custard Pie. It has a yellow deck, which I guess is where it gets its name from. And similar to Schismo, it was built mid-70s, I believe. Schismo was built in 1976. The charts for this stretch of water say in red ink you must stay a hundred oh, un, uh, unauthorized vessels must stay a hundred meters away from berthed tankers. I don't think everyone was doing that but uh, no one got shot or arrested uh, so all is well. Where are you aiming? Here we are approaching the old point house on the northwest edge of Angle Bay. We had all eight boats in the fleet today. Famous Goose, Acapella, Custard Pie, Lady Sarah, Schismo, Vertigo, and two boats with no name. Interestingly, all but one, me, decided to beach their boats on an ebb tide. Schismo was spared the indignity of being lifted like a beached whale back into the water. Being such a nice day with a steady F3 all day, we decided to continue on to Dale Beach. That's about another two hours beat westwards. Here we are approaching Dale Beach, a popular spot in the Milford Haven waterway and also a starting point to one of the RYA dinghy trails. So we've, uh, we've been to Angle Bay from Nayland today and that was our lunch stop and then we decided sod it, we'll carry on and we sailed all the way to Dale which is over there and um, we've had a afternoon tea and cake in Dale and now we are starting an 8.1 nautical mile sail back to Nayland from Dale. Thankfully the wind's behind us this time so uh, see you in Nayland.
As a group, we used a club frequency to communicate, but with all the, tank t uh, the tanker traffic, it's worth monitoring the Port Authority as well as Channel 16. So I set my radio to Triwatch so I could hear VTS broadcasts. VTS stands for Vessel Traffic Services. So we've, uh, we've got the wind behind us now from Dale, uh, which has been nice because uh, it makes a change. And uh, scooting along now, I've just hit five knots. I've got Navionics showing on my phone and we're scooting along, I'm struggling to keep this sail in the right spot. Um, but yeah, five knots in this little GP14. That's quite, uh, that's quite pleasant. The wind's moving around a little bit and I'm trying to go a different direction so it keeps flipping across the other side. It's good though, it's nice. Nice. To be. I've been sat on the same side of the boat for an hour and 33 minutes so far and I've got, I can't see any reason to change sides uh, at all on the journey back so I might be sat here for another half an hour or three quarters of an hour on one tack that's amazing This was the route back to Nayland from Dale, all on one tack with the wind following. Very pleasant. It was uh, two and a quarter hours sail time. We hit 6.2 knots, speed over ground, and a total distance of 8.5 nautical miles. Here I am in a sheltered spot preparing some lunch while the others found a picnic table or two. I will join them in a moment. <laughs> I'm not here. You're not here? I'm not here. Okay, yeah. you're a picnic. Yeah. <laughs> Winds were extremely light at the start of our return journey and the idle speed of the Harold Salverson reminded me of Chitty Chitty Bang Bang.
Although we had lunch at Langoon, we were obviously feeling a bit greedy, so we also stopped at the Jolly Sailor at Burton Ferry Jetty. This was our route back to Nayland via a second refreshment stop at the Jolly Sailor Public House. The journey time was two hours. We, well, I hit a max speed of 5.5 knots, speed over ground, and a distance of 5.4 nautical miles. And today, the next day, we are going to revisit Angle Bay. The wind is stronger and very gusty, so we had a slightly smaller fleet. The last day and this yellow mark, which we've been sailing by every morning, marks the end of a line of three large concrete blocks that we used as mooring anchors for the Sunderland Shore flying boats. The last surviving Sunderland flying boat arrived back in Pembroke Dock on March 24th, 1961 and can now be seen on display in the Sunderland Flying Boat Museum in Pembroke Dock. Pembroke Dock was at one time, during World War II, the largest flying boat station in the world, being home for almost 100 aircraft. Another thing to consider here in daylight hours is this huge Irish ferry which arrives at approximately midday every day and leaves about four hours later. Best to stay out of its way. three quarters into the journey and looking at that distance still to go we've probably got another 20 minutes maybe half an hour before we actually get on to the beach at Angle Bay and you see it's uh, so it's oh it's an incoming tide as well so we've got we've got a few knots of uh, tide against us so it's been quite slow going but enjoyable when the sun's come out. So we're just on the west side of the entrance to Angle Bay and uh, that is the RLI Lifeboats station. Thank you, 
I've lost the wind now. It was very gusty in Angle Bay these days, so I tied to a mooring ball and lowered my mainsail, and then I sailed onto the beach under the furled Genoa only. So here's Schismo, Vertigo and a boat with no name. And here's Lady Sarah and another boat with no name. And here they all are in one shot. Between us all, we had sailed to Langoom, La Rennie, Pembroke River, Angle Bay twice, Dale, and we were based at Nayland Yacht Club. Thanks to Nayland Yacht Club for being such wonderful hosts, and to all those who attended for making it a wonderful week of sailing. For inquiries about joining the GP14 Association, please visit gp14.org. Link is in the description below. Thanks for watching. See you next time.